Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now. God, we thank you for what you've done. Even before this moment. But God, we thank you more for what you're going to do. God, even though we don't see it, don't feel it. Something tells us that you're still working. Now, God, we make an attempt to posture ourselves, position ourselves, so that what you're doing behind the scene can manifest, God, in our presence. God, remove every hindrance, every blockage. Anything in us, God, that will prevent your promise from manifesting in our lives. God, we give you permission to work in us, through us, and for us. As we open up our hearts to receive your word today, we decree and declare that you never stop working. God, we trust you now. Speak to our hearts, speak to our spirits. Give a word that will keep us focused on what you've called us to do for such a time as this. We thank you now and we give you praise in advance. We say it is so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I was, I was watching the live and I was looking at responses from our virtual family. And when you see people in the virtual church praising or getting praise emojis because they can't be, can't be present, they'll let you know that God is doing something in people's lives that sometimes we don't get to see right away. And all that we've seen and witness with our eyes hallelujah somebody work this for me hallelujah on a weekly basis <clears throat> I still believe that some of us are going to miss it would be a shame to be in a season of manifestation and miss what God has for you I was just asking God, I was, I was praying, and I said, God, what would be the hindrance? And the Lord spoke to me so clearly, he said, people have taken lightly of the book club and learning about getting over a fence and forgiving, and say that it's a primary thing that's going to prevent a lot of people from embracing or receiving what he has for them. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on, sir. The song is true. Even when you don't see it, you, he's, working. he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. But it is us that cause ourselves to be out of position to receive from God. Hallelujah. Before we go into the word, I just want you to give God a hand praise for what he's done. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've truly, I've truly been enjoying the presence and the anointing that we've been feeling in this house, man. And I thank God for the energy. I don't believe, I don't believe in energy as from a spiritual perspective, but I'm talking about the all, oh, the kind of kneel, the tangible presence of God that we've been feeling and experiencing in this church. And it's not just a feeling. He's doing something behind the scenes. Somebody say he's working on me. He's working on me. <laughs> he's working on me. Amen. As we position ourselves and get ready for this rise of the warriors, this conference coming on next week, glory to God, progressive women's conference, locked and loaded, ready for battle. The battle has given us the victory. You can't get the victory if you don't learn how to forgive. And this is all God been dealing with me with for the last few days when my wife finished last week. Position yourself. 
hallelujah, to get what God has for you. Amen. We thank God for all of your respective places. Amen. We thank God for our virtual church family. Glory to God. We thank God for every person. If I don't call you, I won't call names. I just, I will acknowledge you as the Lord leads. But grab your Bibles real quick before you take your seats. Amen. I do want to acknowledge my best friend in the whole world. My girlfriend, my wife, my co-laborer, my prayer partner, the one who sees me in my good, my bad, and my ugly, and still submits to who I am in her life. It's like the word of God, a two-edged sword. Our relationship is like a two-edged sword. I'm her husband and her pastor. And I'm grateful to God for blessing me with her. Glory to God. Can y'all give God a hand praise for her? Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for the leadership of the church. Amen. And all of you are leaders in your own right. But some of you these last few weeks have really stepped up and been doing some things. And I don't want to make anybody jealous, so I won't call names. But go ahead and tap yourself on the shoulder. Say, I thank God I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The grace to do this. Amen. Grab your word real quick. We're going to go to Luke. I'm going to be short this morning. The clock is already going. I thank God for that. Amen. I thank him for being on time, putting me in time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm excited. I told them if I holler a little bit today, don't mind me. It's just a little bit of the preaching, preaching anointing that. Did I shout? Oh, I didn't know I shout. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> go to Luke. 23 real quick Luke 23 we're gonna be two passages of scripture this morning for our foundation amen and I thank God that we are part of a teaching preaching church teaching preaching church everybody say teaching preaching we preach and we teach some people call it preaching Bible says because the preacher was wise he still taught the people he taught the people he gave them counsel through teaching because the Bible said that in all our getting, get understanding. Now, good preaching will give you understanding. It's your exegy of message and, and all those things. And um, But this is what I've been graced to do. Hallelujah. Luke 23 and 34. One passage of scripture. Then we're going to Acts 7 and verse 60. Very quickly. Luke 23 and 34 in the King James Version. And the word of God says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. He said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Acts 7, verse number 60. When you get there, say amen. Hallelujah. Acts 7 and 60. This is Stephen talking at this time. And Stephen, and the scripture says, and I, I'm going to back up a little bit to verse 58. And it says, and they cast, cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. They laid their clothes at Saul's feet and they stoned Stephen. They stoned Stephen, calling on the Lord, calling upon the Lord. While he's getting stoned, he's calling on the Lord. Y'all with me? And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He know he about to go. He checking out. And he kneeled down while being stoned, calling on the Lord. He kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And we had said this. He fell asleep. Glory to God. I want to talk from the subject very quickly. I can't afford not to forgive. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Look at your Bible and say, I can't afford, I can't afford not to forgive. Not to forgive. Oh, my God. Since I minister on this topic a lot on forgiveness, I don't know if I spoke from this topic before. But these particular passages of scripture, the Lord laid, showed me last week when my wife was up. And she so eloquently released the word. For the past couple of weeks, she's imparted to us and empowered us through the word. With all the revelation that has been flowing the last three or four weeks, there are some things that God said to me. He, he, he said, people are going to miss it. They're watching others receive what the promise is over their lives, and they're wondering why is it not, it's not happening for them. 
And he said, because they refuse to forgive. Some people think they have a legal right or they have a reason to hold on to something because of the depth or the severity of the hurt or the disappointment. And it's because of that they still hold on to unforgiveness or they walk in offense. She spoke last week or the last two weeks. The first thing she said, my promise still has purpose. Meaning that no matter what's in front of me, God has made me a promise. And if I'm going to receive that promise, I got to work it. Got to go through what I'm going through to get to what he has for me. She said, amen. But when God tells me to do something and I start doing it, something begins to happen. Last week, she spoke to us. The promise is activated. I don't know if this is just the title, but this is what God stood out to me. The promise is activated, not automated. In other words, to be activated, that means something causes the promise to manifest. It has to be activated. Not automatic, meaning like it's not going to automatically manifest. What God's promised you is not going to automatically manifest in your life just because you want it. Something has to activate it. In this season, in this time of automation and technology, we want everything instantaneously. We don't want to go through what it takes to get to it. We don't want to work the process to get to our promise. And so when it's not automatic or automated, we tend to lose focus. Oh my. Or we tend to forget what God has promised. She said something in the last week, and I want y'all to, if you're a note taker, get this in your notes. She said, amen, a promise is a declaration or a covenant agreement. So when God has made a promise with us, it is an agreement that he makes with us. And we are the only ones that can void out that agreement. We are the only ones that can interrupt that agreement. She said there are three types of people. People who make things happen. People who watch things happen. And people who wonder what happened. My question is, which one are you? Because you make things happen or you do something to cause things to happen in your life. And things manifest. But then there's that other group of people that's watching God bless you or watch you walking in the blessing. They're watching and then, and then they're with somebody else. They're standing beside that other person who's wondering, how did this happen for them and not for me? Oh my. Then she told us to pray until something happens. She told us, amen, finally, in that third part, I missed the second one, but the third thing says, always return back to the word of God. The word of God has to be our final authority if we're going to see the full manifestation of what God has promised. So in, in, in all this, in this promise series, God started me with the op- when it says when opposition challenges your promise. In other words, when God has made your promise, there's always going to be opposition. My finding in that, my final finding with that topic was opposition is necessary. Because the closer I get to what God has promised, the more the enemy is going to show his head. So when he starts acting up, Somebody say, I push a little harder. harder. See, some of us get tired of pushing, waiting on the promise. Some of us get tired of waiting. And so when opposition shows his head, we delay or we give God our due season another date or another time. We make another appointment. We set another appointment and we're not authorized to make these appointments. God sets our appointments. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He was also in due time. Amen. And and, and when when that due time comes, that means that we have stayed our process. The second thing I spoke to you about is when, when, when it comes to the promises of God, opposition don't even matter. So that means I'm pushing, I position myself so to a point that I know the enemy is going to do what he's supposed to do. I got to do what I'm supposed to do. Are y'all listening to me? Just like the song we were saying, even when I don't see it, he's working. When I don't feel it, he's working. He never stopped. He never, we swing and they're talking about what God is doing. How many know the enemy always imitates what God is doing? He can't create anything original. He is not a cre- he originator. He cannot originate anything. He only tries to uh, talk, copy or duplicate and he perverts. He copies what is good and he perverts it so that he can pervert our thinking. 
The Bible talks about him, says, amen, he's an angel, of, uh, his ministers disguise themselves as angels of light. They, they try to imitate that which is good. They don't have the capacity to produce good. And so many of us are stuck in a place where, amen, we've gone through something and we're holding an alt or an offense and we wonder why stuff is blocked in our life. Are y'all still listening to me? God told me to tell you, because of the outpouring and manifestation we've witnessed, it would be a sad thing to sit in a place where the supernatural is happening and it not happened for you. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not going to miss in this season. Y'all ain't saying that, right? I'm not going to miss in this season. I cannot afford, I can't afford not to forgive. Amen. And then the second thing he gave me said, it's going to take some work. But I can do it. <laughs> it's going to take some work. There's some things that I've gone through. There's some people that I've dealt with. There's some things that have confronted me. Amen. But I found out that I can't afford not to forgive. But the reality of it is, amen, in order for me to give, it's going to take some work. I got to coach myself through some things. I got to talk myself off some cliffs. Y'all better talk to me. Amen. I got to, I got to convince myself that it's not even worth the energy to hold myself in offense, amen, to hold unforgiveness in my heart. Amen. Some of us are giving people free rent in our minds. All right. All right. They're holding down real estate in your life, amen, free, free of charge, amen, because you're holding something against them, amen, and they're just moving on with their life. Yeah. I spoke a message some years ago. When, I'm, when I grow up, I can get my stuff. Paul said when I was a child, I spake as a child, understood as a child, I thought as a child. He said, but when I became a man or when I matured, amen, I put away childish things. Amen. He said, I, st- I thought, I understood, I spake. I thought, understood, and spoke. He said, these things is the way I act. But when I grew up, I stopped speaking like that. I stopped thinking like that. I stopped acting like that. All right. And when people are still immature and you can forgive them or they can't rub you like they used to rub you, folks get mad at you because you ain't mad. My question is, what makes us think? Are y'all listening to me? What makes us think we have the right to still hold a grudge? It's a quiet church today. I ain't see this like that. I thought y'all be excited. What makes us think? <laughs> Apostle, you don't know what I've been through. Y'all saw the scripture I just read, right? Okay, let me let me help y'all a little bit more. Uh, Go to Matthew. We went in the, in the book, the book of debate of Satan the other night, and uh, Elder Williams was teach Pastor Jamal, Amen. And they opened up with Matthew, eighteen. This is gonna help y'all. This is gonna free you up. Hallelujah. Matthew eighteen, and verse number twenty-one. Are y'all here? When I step on your toe, just holler. He got me. He got me. It says then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He says, he got smart, he said, to seven times? But Peter was saying, I only have the capacity to forgive him just so many times. So so after this is done, after that seven times, hey, it's on. So he thought him being Peter, being Jesus, I'm a bearer. You know, Peter was the one that stood up for Jesus. When they came to get Jesus, Peter pulled out his sword, cut the man's ear off. Jesus picked it up and put it back on. Just like the Bible said, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Jesus didn't think like Peter. And Peter said, till seven times. Jesus said to him, I say unto thee, unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Now, some of us, we are so rooted and so desire to have such an appetite to hold somebody in bondage, we will literally try to take that multiplication, count it up, and start checking off stuff. But this scripture says daily. Now go ahead and add that up seven times 70. That's about 490 times. Daily. I do not have the capacity to be counting how many times I have to forgive someone, amen, for God to release the blessing in my life. So I might as well decide I can't afford not to forgive. 
It costs me more to be mad at you. Y'all better come on here, somebody. It costs me more to let you get on my nerves. Oh, it's going to hit initially like a bee sting. But it ain't going to kill me. Come on. When you're looking at this, some folks just say, well, you don't understand what happened to me when I was this. You ain't that no more. I went through this. Well, amen. I'm not taking light of what people go through, but I believe there's a process that you can go through to get free. Whether it's physical, verbal, uh, mental abuse, whatever it was in your life, I believe, amen, that you, there's a process that you can go through to get free. Yes, sir. If you want to be free. Yeah. Somebody said, if you want to be free. So, so whoever the corporate is or whoever the attacker or the one that came against you, amen, every time that person, a thought of that person comes into your mind or every time you see that incident, amen, you go back into this place of withdrawing. And while you're withdrawn, somebody say you're missing out. Yes, sir. Offense. Let's get some definitions real quick. Hallelujah. I, I, I just, I was thinking about this. I need God to do too much. And last week we were running around here saying exceedingly, abundantly, above all that, I ask or think, but if I don't forgive, okay. it's not going to happen. <laughs> the remix, amen. If I don't forgive, if I hold offense in my heart, I can sing this song all I want to, be all excited, nothing happening, jumping, shouting, running, and still mad. And they've moved on. Tell your neighbor, I, I tell your neighbor, say, I can't afford it. I can't, I can't. I, it, it, it costs me too much. When I see people that I think are not as saved as I am, they hadn't been in the church as long as me. But God is blessing them. Maybe they tapped into the art of forgiveness. They don't know as much scripture as I know. Their tongues are not as fluent as mine. Amen. They don't dress like I dress, ride what I ride, live like I live, but they're blessed. They're free in their mind. Y'all better talk to me. Amen. They're not getting old fast. Amen. Why? Because they mastered the art of forgiveness. I can't afford not. I got to be real with myself now. Some of y'all need to write it down. It's going to take some work. There's, there's There's some incidents there, there's some, some situations, there's some people that come in my mind, and when I think of forgiveness, literally I say, it's going to take some work. I've got to forgive you. I don't, I don't want to, but I don't have a choice. <laughs> God, give me a, thank you, baby, you're in my head. God, give me a want to pertain to this situation. Because if I stay stuck, I don't know what this situation is blocking. How many of y'all mad at somebody? Think about it now. Think about it. all the folks you still mad. They hurt my feelings. Some of us get mad about the simple stuff. You put your best message on Facebook. Nobody didn't like it. And so we start saying crazy. I said it. They they looking, but they ain't liking. They don't have to like it. Who you put it out there for? Oh, I said that. I had to fix myself. I said, bring that back. Bring that back. Amen. I told my wife, I don't even like to go on social media because it's depressing. Because we're living our life through likes, connections, and followers. And half of the people that you got, that you got a friends list, I got 3,000 friends. Half of them don't even know you. They know somebody that know you, so they sitting, you, they, you got connected. And now you think you're more popular because you got more friends. I got 1,000 followers, really? You got 1,000 people judging you. You got 1,000 people watching your life. You got, you got 1,000 people, amen, waiting on you to miss. So they can say, I thought she was saved. I thought he had it. I thought she was an elder. I thought he was a prophet. I thought he, and you looking at all this and hear one negative thing and it pushes you back. When I think about what I need from God, I've come to the conclusion it costs me too much. 
I cannot afford. I can't afford it. Not to forgive. I need everything in my life paid off. Yeah, 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 I missed what I just said. <laughs> Everything, even when I say in my life, I'm talking about everything I have and everybody that's connected to me. I need us totally debt free. I need us to owe no man nothing but to love him. I need us, amen, full in our health. I need us knowing that we are the head and not the tail above only, that we are never beneath. Amen. But I need you to understand that, amen, when you don't forgive, you are blocking for somebody else. What if my unforgiveness is blocking for my last seed that came in my family? I got generations. Y'all better come on here. So I can't afford it. I got stuff that's got to get all the way to TJ. It, don't, it, don't just, it doesn't just affect me. It affects my children's. See, I don't look at it like that. So we mad at somebody. Who ain't got nothing going on. And God waiting on you to forgive. Did we finish reading that scripture? Did, did we go to Matthew? Did I tell y'all go to Matthew? Yeah. Yeah. The, the scripture, one scripture says when you stand praying. When you stand praying. And you find that your brother has an all against you. Go to them. That's over there in Mark. <laughs> go to them. <laughs> I, ain't got, I don't have a problem. But Mary mad at me. And I'm trying to go to the altar and ask God for something. Holy Spirit reveals to me that she mad with you. She has an issue. Most of us said, hey, that's her problem. Hey, my problem. But if God reveals it to me, he wants me to do something with it. That's a part of humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. I didn't do nothing to her, but she mad. But God said, humble yourself. And go to them. Now, if they forgive you, it's good. If not, you get a brother. You take somebody that's with you. If they don't want to forget the both of you, take it before the church. I don't know why she tripping. That's how I would say it, but that might not even be right, because that might stir up some more stuff. Y'all, come on now. Tell the truth. Y'all know how we talk. You, 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 you perturbed, just a little bit perturbed. And so now, you got to be nice about it. Ain't no punk. Don't be a punk. Don't be a punk. Just be humble. Are we still here? So I, I want to I I make a reference to three people in this text. First, we, talk, we talked about Jesus. Jesus was talking to the Father, and he's been persecuted. He's been uh, tortured. He's on the cross. And in the midst of him, this happening, he asked the father to forgive them. We got full grown folks. He said they don't know what they're doing. Y'all better catch this. They know not what they do. Now they're fully grown. They persecuted or they've killed people before. So they know what they're doing. The issue is they don't know who they doing it to. Oh, come on, and they're doing it for the wrong reason. Y'all missed that. They went over y'all head. Some folks are messing with you because they see you a certain way. But they don't know who you are to God. And say so they're coming at you like you could want to. But not God's woman servant. And so their view of what you said to them was wrong based upon their standards, yes, even though you told them the truth. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, Jesus was being crucified, not because he did anything wrong, oh, right. but he challenged their standards and he told them the truth. Yes, and since he challenged their standards and told them the truth, amen, they crucified him. Yes. Uh -huh. And while they're crucifying him, in all humility, he said, Father, Forgive them, for you know not what they do. Now, how many of y'all got that in y'all? They're coming against you like that. I had an encounter 
with somebody and, and I had to ask God to forgive them because they didn't know what they would do. They didn't know who they were doing it to. You, you, you must know who I am to God. I'm not perfect. Somebody said they don't know. When they start bothering you, you should look at somebody and say, you don't even know. You, you, don't, you don't even know. You coming against me like that, amen. I haven't done anything to you, but I've told you the truth. I've shared the realness with you, and you got mad because realness found out your fakeness. Truth exposed your lie, amen. And now I'm telling you the truth, and you're mad. Jesus did something right there. How, how many of you got that capacity? I'm helping you, trying to get you delivered, because he came to redeem them back to the Father, and they killed them, killed him for helping them. I don't have that gear. It's going to take some work. <laughs> That's why I had to add that subtop. It's going to take some work. Yeah, but I'm going to get there, because I can't afford not to forgive. So they put, and he prayed for them on the cross. And even while he's praying for them, the scriptures say, they, 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 they cast lots for his clothing. They, they divide his clothing and they made bets on him. Why he praying for them. I'm praying for you and you trying to get my stuff. Why you crucifying me? Why you talking about me? There's some folks talking about you right now. And you mad. They're trying to get your stuff. They're trying to divide up your stuff, and, and, and your requirement is to pray for them. <laughs> it's a quiet church. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Offense. Let's talk about offense. What is offense? Just in case y'all know you're you in offense. Offense is a violation or a breaking of a social or moral rule. We made an agreement, and you broke the agreement. Now, it is an offense. I have to choose whether or not I take offense. Blessed is he who is not offended. How did you get offended? I took offense. Offense comes, but I don't have to take offense. You know how mad folks get when they try to offend you? And you look at me like, oh, I, see, I, I, see where you, I see what you're doing. Say your neighbors, I refuse to be offended. When I hold on to offense, it leads to unforgiveness. Don't miss this. I start living a natural life of being a person who is unforgiving. Unforgiving. My heart gets hard. It's easy for me not to forgive. Not disposed to forgive or to show mercy. This is what unforgiveness is. Not allowing for mistakes. Hold everybody to the letter. To your standard, not God's standard. All right. Now, if I'm not meeting God's standard, I can't hold you to God's standard. If I'm not walking in truth, why should I hold you to the letter of truth? Are y'all still with me? So I have to forgive. Here goes the good definition. Y'all ready? To forgive means to pardon or to cease from having resentment. To grant a pardon or cease to feel resentment. <laughs> to cease. Y'all got real quiet right there. Y'all got some resentment against some people. I ain't really mad, but I resent you. Just a little bit. But a little <laughs> levels the lump. So if I let a little bit get in there and I don't deal with that little bit, little becomes much when you put in the message. Little becomes much when you allow it to grow. Little takes root. That's why I say I can't afford it. Somebody say I can't afford it. Think about all that's been held up. This is what God told me to tell you. Think about all that's been held up because you're happy with being mad at somebody. Watch this. You're not even happy at being mad at them. I'm going to tell you a secret. Know why you stay mad a long time? Because they don't get the right response to you being mad. I'm going to show them. They don't even care. You, 
You mad at everybody in your family, your, full, your whole family. You, you, you the black sheep. I'm not the black sheep of anything. I'm just different. I had to get delivered. My wife can attest to this. I had to get delivered from a spirit of offense with my family. I am, I am, grew up in our house. I had three brothers. Thank you, son. I had three brothers younger than me, three sisters older than me. Middle child in the house. There were two brothers prior to the marriage. They never grew up in the house. And so in, in being that middle child, my father got hurt when I was about 13. He was paralyzed from the neck down. So I was playing sports. I had to go to work. I had to two, choose what two sports I could play. I, I played sports all year round, but when that happened, I had to choose two sports. So I had to leave school, go to work. If I got off work too late, or if everybody that was going my way was already going, I had to walk home or catch the bus. Bus stopped running at a certain time. So my work was downtown Montgomery, 500 North Perry Street. I still know the address. And I live way out in Ridgecrest, which is about how many miles? It's about 12, 10, 12 miles every night. Still got my book bag. Driving these. That's how I learned how to run when I got in the army. So I started jogging home. My dad was so kind to buy me a car one day. I had to get it fixed. But I was working to earn a salary that he would normally earn. And I gave up my sports. But come on here. Trying to help raise my brothers. Got three sisters who won't listen. They're putting all the responsibility on me because they're older than me. I had one, she just left, so she's about six years older than me. She left the house because she, when I thought I was in charge, I'm in charge. I don't care, y'all older, so I'm fighting everybody in the house. <laughs> Especially that one back there. Elder. <laughs> Please don't never want to listen. But I came to the conclusion that I was born to the wrong family. <laughs> How did this fall on me? For years, I said, I didn't ask for this. Then I joined the military. My dad got mad because he thought I was going to college and I was already in the military. And I said, Joke, I've been working all these years and you can't Applaud me for a decision. Holding a grudge. Holding grudges will block stuff in your life. And it, 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 we were married for years before I shared. I said, baby, she said, why you didn't share this with me? I said, I didn't think you was ready for it. Because when you share your weakness with people, you make yourself vulnerable. Said, why you don't like to go around your family? I said, I don't like them. I love them. And they didn't do anything to me. It was something I took on myself. Because all the time we eat together, we always have fun. But I was ready to leave as soon as the fun was over. Because I was holding a grudge. I was offended because they didn't appreciate what I was bringing to the house. So when I left, I had this mentality. Some of y'all better catch this. They'll need me before I need them. Boy, this is going to block a blessing for some of y'all. I'm making money now. I had an allotment. I'm just sharing my personal business because some of y'all are going to do this. I had an allotment I shared with my father, sending money to my parents every month. My wife had to take my daughter to the doctor. I said, Dad, give her $75. He said, I don't have it. I said, the money just went to the bank. He raised his voice when he said something hard to me. I said, he got a lot of nerve. The audacity. I know what's there. I said, no problem. I walked straight across the street. Back then, finance was across the street. I cut off the allotment. I said, he'll see it next month. It won't be there. I definitely had to ask him again. Did all this and had a messed up a relationship with my father. Y'all better come on. So I, I missed years of relationship because of an issue I had. In my feelings. Somebody say, get out your feelings. I'm still mad. Some of y'all say, I'm still mad at them. Well, get, get over it. 
Because if you don't, that was the chapter. I'm going there. Chapter 11 in, in the Beta Satan book. It said, if you don't give forgiveness, you don't get forgiveness. So I came to the point, I said, man, I got to talk to this man. I got to talk to my siblings. My dad's, our dad's, my dad's late, late, last great conversation. My dad rededicated his life to the Lord under my counsel. Y'all better come on here. You know how I started? I said, Dad, you need to forgive me. I've been mad at you for about 10 years. I would go to the house and say, how you doing? Walk past him and go in the house. No handshake, no nothing. And I believe I look like him. My dad was about 6'6", six, six, muscular man. <laughs> but I had this issue for a long time. And once I received or asked for forgiveness, forgave myself, and ask him for forgiveness, it's like everything started happening in my life. Now, get me now. I'm in the military. Everything I'm doing is good. I don't get promoted, but stuff is still held up. See, I was getting, you know, splashes of blessings here and there. But I want showers of blessings. Promotion was delayed even though I was ahead of some of my peers. I had to work harder to get it because I was losing out, harboring unforgiveness. That's why I say you cannot afford, you can't afford not to forgive. Now, some of y'all mad at your children, mad at your husband, your wife, still holding a grudge, and they're moving on. They don't even care. Some of them, they don't even know. You ever talk to somebody and they say, I was upset with you because such and such. And you'd be saying to yourself, I didn't even know it. I said to somebody, it wasn't a problem before I knew it. And it's not a problem now. But God dealt with me even about that. Because they had an issue with me. And when I find out about it, even though it didn't bother me, I still need to make it right. Whatever I did to make you feel like that to me, because I didn't know it. If I didn't know it, whatever I did to cause you to feel like this, please forgive me. Some of y'all say, I ain't know it. I don't care. Blockage. Blockage. That's like having a, a blockage in an a, a artery going to your heart. You don't know it. it just happened to happen. And almost, amen, a tragedy causes us to find out that there's a blockage. You run it down, and then you have a clutch in you. What's going on? I thought I was healthy. You got clogged arteries. <laughs> the blood not getting there like it's supposed to. Forgiveness is a blockage. Unforgiveness is a blockage. Forgiveness to open that thing back up. That's why I say I can't afford. What if they don't want to forgive you? You make it right on your part. It's just like me having this, this our situation, our argument. We don't talk about it, and Mary's still mad at me, and I don't ask for forgiveness, and we had a conversation, and Mary still got that thing, and I'm saying, well, it's on her now. Man, I'm going to get rid of style. I got This is what they said in the class. Two things. Pastor Jamal brought out. He said, in the class, you got to restore them. And what was that? One was restore. Release and restore them. Woo! Who you mad at? You got to release them from the bondage of of your unforgiveness or your offense of the offense, release them, then restore them. Restoring does not mean they come and sit beside you again. This is my last point. Restoring them, amen. Yes, he's a brother, she's a sister, but you had them on this level right here. They acted at you at this level down here. But when the offense came, you kicked them off of that level too. 
<laughs> That's why I'm telling my time up. <laughs> you kick them off that level where the unforgiveness happened. That's where they were. You had them here. This is where they really were in their mind towards you. When it says restore them, you don't restore them to where you thought they were. You restore them where they started from. So if you're still crazy, I'm going to restore you back to your crazy place. I had you right here, but I didn't know you was crazy. Closing. But I'm, gonna, I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to love you with your cray cray self. I had to learn this as a pastor, y'all. You understand, Pastor Huntley? You have to restore people so you can move forward. So when you see people in public and you say, how you doing? They're like, like, okay. Did I do anything to bother you? I had a young brother one time. I love him still like a son. I reached out to shake his hand. I saw him at Walmart. I said, how you doing? His wife spoke. Hey, dad. I said, how you doing? I reached out to shake his hand. He did me like this. He looked at me up and down. I had my hand like this. Now, the Kushite in me, you're still there. It's a process. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some work. <laughs> but I'm going to do it. On, so I pulled my hand back, prophets. I did like this. I said, really? Yeah. And it really came out. And I was waiting for a negative response. Because I wanted him to like bow up or something. <laughs> We're going to need medical services at Walmart. <laughs> I said, can we, can we do lunch? Because he was me and said, I'll think about it. And walked around me. Because I didn't move, he walked around me. And his wife looked at him and said, really? He kept walking. I said, okay. Before I left Walmart, I had already forgiven him. I said to myself, he don't even know the condition he's put himself in. And I won't let your out with me. I've offered forgiveness. I offered a handshake, even take you to lunch. And you still mad. And so even if we were to get, come back to a right relationship today, I had him at this place in my life. But his mentality tells me that he don't deserve that spot, but he still deserves to be a son. I need to stop. That's why we talk about the prodigal son. They put a robe and a ring on him. Yeah, but he still had to learn the house all over again. He didn't come back and be in charge of nobody. He just came and received his place. Come on. He released him from what he did and then restored him as a son. Y'all good? Y'all know what they say when you get to this point? I'm going to park right here. Because I want to talk about Joseph and all that, but we're going to leave it. Y'all stand up. We stand up. Y'all good? In the, in, in the, the, we got some people in our chat. They said they can't afford not to. Listen, listen. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. I, I could keep going, but my time is up, and I'm going to be obedient to what the destruction that I put out. You have too much on the line. Some of y'all, some of y'all might need to close your eyes while I'm telling you this. You have too much on the line. There's too much being held up that's waiting to be released in your life. And you walk around here mad at folks. I would dare to even say some of us are mad at ourselves for decisions we've made and we haven't even forgiven ourselves. Come on. We haven't forgiven ourselves. Forgiveness starts with you dealing with you first. Because if I don't forgive, I walk in offense. And why am I offended? Because I didn't forgive. Why didn't I forgive? Because I was already offended. Offended. Offense caused me to go there. 
you have to ask yourself, why did situation or this offend me to that degree? And most of the time, because you've held a person in a place in your life, they disappointed you. You had an expectation that was not met. And instead of voicing what you thought should have happened, or being mature to say, you hurt my feelings, or I thought this, we were like this. Instead of saying that, we harbor offense. Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, with all that you have on the line, and all that's connected to you, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? I would submit to you it's not worth it. It is not worth it. Just like Jesus said, forgive, for they know not what they do. And they knew very well what they were doing because they were skilled at it, but he was talking about they didn't know who they were doing it to. Just as Stephen's were being stoned, and he still said, Father, don't lay this to their charge. This ought to be the mentality that we take on. Mm-mm. Father, we just thank you right now. You ever hear this bow? Father, we praise and we thank you right now for the words you release in this place. Father, you said that your word would go out from you and not return unto you void, but accomplish that for which you've sent it. God, wherever the word has found us today, give us the strength, God, the boldness to make the necessary corrections. Give us wisdom, God, as how to approach the situation that's held us in offense, that's held us in bondage, Give us the wisdom, God, how to navigate through the situation that's causing a blockage in our spiritual life. Blocking the promises that we know that's been spoken over us. Not only that, God, but as you show me, give me the bonus to make the corrections. God, even if I forgive and they reject my forgiveness, help me to stand on what you said in your word. God, I trust your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So I ask for the wisdom to search out the scriptures, God, for my instructions. Give me eyes to see, past the natural. For God, we know there are many under demonic influence, so they don't understand forgiveness. Give me the wisdom how to deal with every situation. And let me not be mishandled as I walk in humility. God, I thank you right now. Give me words, God, that will soothe rather than cut. Give me a mentality, Lord, to move away from that which offends or causes me to miss. And even if I am rejected through the process, God, give me the ability to stand on your word. Having done all to stand, let me stand there for Fully gone, armed in God clothing your armor we thank you right now God we give you praise for our response to this particular word we trust you God what I need you all to do while, you, while we're still here see a situation you need, to, you need to release yourself from oh God see a person you need to release And if you need to go and make it right with somebody, ask God for the wisdom. Ask God for the right timing to go. Because they they might not be ready for you to come. That you can be free. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty or freedom. Told us not to be entangled again with the yokes of bondage. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I want to be free. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We trust you. And we believe, God, that you've given us what we need to finish this process. We thank you right now. 
and we bless you for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen.